So why doesn't the hypochondriac get everything they imagine? Why doesn't the catastrophist experience all the catastrophes that they imagine? Why is it someone that worries all the time doesn't get up what they worry about all the time? That showed up in the Law of Attraction by Neville Goddard group today. And we're going to nail it in this podcast and we're going to have fun. Because the other part was if we get what we think about... You see, in the, in the, in the Law of Attraction by Neville Goddard, we've got the Mod Squad, and the mods always say, scan for what's different. Don't scan for what's the same. Do not combine Neville with all the crazy shit. Because here's what happens. All the silly stuff says, by the way, by silly stuff, I mean teachers that don't really get it. See, here's what I notice. Sometimes, when someone's going to make a right-hand turn in front of me, they use their indicator, their turn signal. Sometimes they don't. But they always steer the car. You don't want to pay attention to what follows. You want to pay attention to what leads. You want to notice what actually steers the car, and it's not the turn signal. I used to say when I was younger, my car is music-powered, because I had these massive woofers in the back seat. They weren't in the car. They were in the back seat. They were woofers. They were big. They were in big wooden boxes in the back seat of the car. And I would joke about my car's music power. The louder and harsher the music, the faster the car would go. That's like saying music causes speeding tickets. It doesn't. (laughs) Meanwhile, let's really nail this. Ready? What you think comes from your state... Your emotions come from your state. (laughs) What you say comes from your state. And you know what? The state of hypochondriac has... Let's just call that a negative daydreamer. A destructive daydreamer. Because a lot of people, they have destructive daydreams. That don't come true, but still destroy their lives. A lot of lovely people have lovely daydreams. That don't come true. But they're lovely people. See, Neville taught something that we call feel it real. We made up that term when it comes to his work. And now everybody uses it. I don't mind. Because it really gets down to the essence of it all. What are you feeling is real? In ManifestingMasteryCourse.com, we don't do manifesting methods till week three. Week one is devoted to having you notice how fast you actually do and how you actually feel it real for everyday events. <laughs> because until you notice that, techniques don't matter. Week two is designed to get you unloopy, because most people imagine loops like the hypochondriac. Even though they imagine, like, they'll look up rare and exotic diseases and not get them, but they'll find another rare and exotic disease or something common. And they'll imagine that. And they'll But they see, they're not really committing imaginal acts like Neville teaches. They're entering into negative daydreams. (laughs) I'll call them negative daydreams. I'm not a fan of positive or negative. I just notice when some people imagine cats, they imagine sneezing. When other people imagine cats, they imagine cuddles. And it's not the cat. (laughs) My ex, she went to work one day. She had a co-worker that was allergic to photos of cats. And so she goes to work one day, and I said, here's what I want you to do. Because I noticed this. I noticed what's really going on. I'm good at that. I trained with some fascinating people when I was much younger. Now I'm a fascinating person that trains people. But years ago, so I go and I visit her at work, and the co-worker walks in the room, sees there's photos of cats, and starts to sniffle up. And I thought, that's interesting. And so I waited like 30 minutes, and I went into the co-worker's little cubicle, and the co-worker didn't, no problem at all. If it was cat gander, cat dander, whatever you want to call it, fluff and stuff, they would have got all puffy around me, but they didn't. So I told my ex, here's what I want you to do. Before you go to work tomorrow, I want you to pick up every cat and rub it all over your sweater, and when you get to work, I want you to go into her office and poof it all over the place. And so she goes to work, and she, she already has all the cat goop on her, and she poofs it all over her co-worker's office. The co-worker comes in, no problem. 
But then she says, come on in, I want to show you something, something really cool. And she came in and she showed her a statue of a cat. And this, all of a sudden, the statue of the cat, a uh, chew, all stuffy. Go figure. See, I want you to get how vast and how fast you are. I want you to get how you really imagine things up. Some people imagine being allergic to cats, <laughs> and they react to that. Some people imagine they could have, they could, they should have, they have to be checked for something. And they don't have the something, they just imagine getting checked. They just imagine telling their friends. They just imagine being in a panic. <laughs> and they do that effectively. But here's the thing. Neville says a couple things that most people don't. Number one, feeling is the secret. And what's the feeling? The feeling is not emotional. The feeling may contain emotions. It may contain sensations. You know, when I imagined up my car, I, I could feel the steering wheel. The ass, my ass in the seat. I could see my puppy dog in the back seat as I hit Tickle Belly Hill doing a little too fast. Whoa. And when I did that, I could see Emmett in the back seat, and I could feel, whoa. And I love taking Tickle Belly Hill a little bit too fast. See, that's emotions, that's sensations, but it's actually the knowing. My car. It's the knowing that I, it's that feeling of ownership. I notice when people talk about addiction, they tend to talk about my addiction. I notice when people that are stuck in things like diabetes, they'll tend to say my diabetes, my hypertension, my blood pressure problem. They own it, and it owns them. On the other, on the other hand, I've worked with people that have gone beyond sugar, that have gone beyond pressure, that have gone beyond all that stuff, even addiction. Oh my God. I know the experts say there's no known cause and no known cure, and if you're a narcotic a person, there's only three inevitable conclusions, jails, institution, and death. I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that way too much from people that honestly experience that as true. And that's what this comes down to. You can have, by the way, it's the porn problem. Let's call it that. Ready? Mr. 20, I look at porn all day, beautiful women doing naughty things, and yet there's not a beautiful woman doing any naughty thing in my life. Why not? See, they fantasize about it, and they even use an aid. You don't have to use an aid. You don't have to use an aid to feel it real or fantasize. Some people just fantasize about looking at naughty women doing nasty things. Or is it nasty women doing naughty things? I don't remember. <laughs> but here's what's fun. If you imagine yourself, see my buddy Sean, we talk about him in Dream Driven Day. The doors are open. Come register if you want in. In Dream Driven Day, I introduce you to Sean. And Sean had a way with the girls. He still does. Sean just imagined up that the girls enjoy him. And they did. He was the kind of guy he'd show up and all the girls would go, wow. On the other hand, I was imagining naughty girls doing nasty things and nasty girls doing naughty things. And I didn't get much of either until I became Sean. Some people daydream destructively. And it does destroy their day. Other people, they daydream delightfully. And they, they're delightful people, but they don't really get what they want. They're just happy. <laughs> That's okay. Here's what I want. Real world results for you. That's what I love about Neville. So if you got gold today, I want you to get all the basic essentials right first. EasyManifesting.com. There's seven little lessons there. Go do them. Don't skip anything. Post on the post. Comment. Let us know you're actually alive. Something happens whenever you commit fully. EasyManifesting.com. That's our gift to you. If you want to make this your total way of life with no exceptions. <clears throat> and here's what I find. Total with no exceptions changes everything. ManifestingMasteryCourse.com In ManifestingMasteryCourse.com, one of the things that we do is the first lessons about the girls giggled. It's about how fast and how vast you are, and you don't realize it until you do. And once you do, once we get to about the middle of the course, we dive deep into the pearl of great price. We explore beyond that into the pure in heart. 
it's it's a wonderful course, ninety seven dollars, ninety day program. That's like a buck a day, cheapo cup of coffee, half a donut. But here's the thing, I want you to experience what changes your imaginal experiences, because when you do what changes how you experience, what you experience, what you experience changes. And you won't be a negative or a positive daydreamer anymore. You'll be someone who understands who you are, how this works, and you'll start nailing stuff every day, every day, every day. And you'll get why it isn't what you think about that matters. Thoughts follow. Emotions follow. Right? What you say follows. The state that you're in, the actual imaginal experience that you have, leads everything. <clears throat> And finally, Neville says, do you believe in the reality of your imaginal act? The hypochondriac really doesn't. They're just looking for another way to get wound up again. They're they're addicted to cortisol. The catastrophist, the conspiracy theorist. Again, they're addicted to cortisol. (laughs) Not a fan. And if you want to explore way beyond that, dreamdrivenday.com. So that's what I got today, gang. Have a lovely day. Enjoy. Have fun. And uh, remember, the turn signal does not steer the car. What you think, your thoughts, what you speak, your words, what you feel emotionally, your emotions, they all follow and they all flow from your state. The state of loving puppy dad has very different thoughts than the state of loving husband. They both have emotions, ups and downs but they're realities that I live from, live in, and give from, and are given to in. So, we call that identity-based manifesting. More on that some other time. Join us at manifestingmasterycourse.com.